Welcome into our second episode of CU Sports Jeopardy. I'm Adam Munster-Tiger, the publisher of BuffStampede.com, and we have a fun show on tap for you today. John Snelson, who won three Emmys during his time with CU Video, will be taking on David Ramirez, who spent some time in CU's recruiting department, went to CU. Uh, John, I know you've done uh, some video work for KU Football. You were a producer on the uh, Chuck and Tito 30 for 30. How are you doing? Kind of walk us through life for you since you left CU Video. I'm good. I uh, I loved working at CU and doing all that, and that's the only reason I got into video. I just wanted to work in football, and uh, it's kind of evolved over the years, and I met uh, a guy, Micah Brown, who played football at KU and then did video stuff for them back in the day, so we work together now and uh, doing all kinds of TV stuff and, uh, you know, I get to do some college game day features and Pac-12 Network and some documentaries and doing good. There's just nothing to film right now. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Are there any projects ongoing right now, or is everything kind of kind of shut down until things open up? We've been doing a NFL Network web series about international players joining the NFL through the Pathway program for the last three years. And so we filmed uh, – I was in Florida filming like March 10th maybe, so like right before all this happened. Uh, so I've been editing that stuff since. You know, okay. Just editing at least. So we have something to do. David, uh, the, the folks on buffstampede.com know you by your moniker, DRAM89. Uh, what stands out when you think back to your, your time at CU? I know, again, you spent a little time in the CU recruiting department. Do you have any uh, fun stories to share from that time? Uh, let's see. No, a lot of losing. Uh, I, was, I was there the 2011, so Embry's first season. Um, yeah, not a lot of fun in terms of, like, winning. But, yeah, it was fun to be around the guys, be around the team. Uh, got to go out to practices, and um, uh, I worked with Coach Brown a lot, so I got to just throw balls to the DBs, um, and that was fun, and uh, pretty much had the same position as Scott Unrein, um, and now he's, you know, still there and doing well, so uh, it's nice to see him uh, have that success. That's awesome. Well, let's jump into the second edition of CU Sports Jeopardy. John, I'm going to have you call Heads or Tails. Tails, except for Lupo. Heads or tails? It's heads. It's heads again for the second oh, time. Man. So apparently uh, tails never fails is not uh, fail proof here. Um, for the folks that didn't see the first show, basically how we're going to do this is we're going to alternate who can pick the category. If you don't know the answer and you don't want to try to answer it, you can pass and then the other person can steal and we'll go back and forth kind of standard jeopardy. And then we'll get into final jeopardy and you guys can decide at that point how much you want to risk. And uh, it should be a fun show. All right, here we go. The categories are 2019 buffs, potpourri. So kind of a mismatch of different topics and questions. Gary Barnett, and then we have a whole category that was sent over from our Jack, who was on the board. He enjoyed the first show of CU Sports Jeopardy. And so, again, uh, kind of another potpourri type category. Facilities. And then Cruton is making another appearance on the show. Obviously, uh, recruiting coverage is one of the things we do on buffstampede.com. So that's a staple on the show here. I'm trying to remember who won the coin toss. David. I think I did. David, so you get uh, first option here. What, what category? Where, where are we headed here? Hmm. Let's, uh, let's just go 2019 buffs for 100. 2019 buffs for 100. These two CU receivers tied for the team lead with 56 receptions in 2019. I'll go with, uh, I'll go with uh, Tony Brown and LaVisca. That is correct. A good start to the show here for David. John, where are we headed? Let's go Barnett 100. He's feeling confident about his GB knowledge. Let's jump into it here. Oh, Gary cool. Barnett won a conference championship at CU in 2001, and he won two conference titles as a head coach of this Big Ten program in the mid-90s. Northwestern. That is correct. Nice. All right, David. Oh, let's see. Uh, we'll just stick with the 2019 buffs for two. All right. CU's streak of allowing 30-plus points in 14 straight games came to an end on November 9th, 
2019 against this team? Uh, I think it was Stanford. That is correct. Back to you, John. I'll do Barnett 200. How many Big 12 North titles did the Buffs win during Gary Barnett's seven years as head coach in Boulder? I believe four. All right, correct. 2001, 2002, 2004, 2005. All right, back to you, David. All right, uh, we can mix it up. I'll, I'll try facilities for 100. He's, he's getting risky here, folks. Facilities. <laughs> Which was open first, the Champion Center or the new indoor practice facility? Uh, the Champion Center. That is correct, the Champion Center. All right, John? Let's do a RJAC 100. Oh, okay. All right. I like it. In week 11 of the 2019 season, Steven Montez became CU's all-time leader in touchdown passes in a game against what team? Uh, and you can pass if you, if you want, if you don't want to try to answer. Washington. That is correct. With an assist from LaVisca Chenault, if you remember the, the great uh-huh. catch that he made in that game. I watched that in Baton Rouge in a hotel late night game. Ooh. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, David, you're up. Uh, let's – well, we'll try Cruton for 100. Who was the top-ranked recruiter, according to 24-7 Sports, on CU's football staff last recruiting cycle? Uh, I'll go with uh, Coach Shev. Darren Chevarini is the answer. All right. It's going to get tougher, guys. So just trying to build up your confidence a little bit here. Good. All right, John, you're up. I'll do Potpourri 100. Who was CU playing when Rashawn Salam passed the 2,000-yard rushing mark in 1994? Iowa State. That is correct. Iowa State. All right, David, you're back up to pick a category here. All right. Uh, I'll go 2019 buffs for 300. The only pass attempted by a non-quarterback in 2019 was by this CU player. Uh, Katie Nixon. Katie Nixon is correct. His pass to Dimitri Stanley against Arizona went for a 38-yard touchdown. I think you guys did some studying for this, huh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was worried about 2019 buffs, so I'm glad David's doing all this. All right, John, where are you headed? I'll do uh, Facilities 200. Original construction on the Dow Ward Center began in what year? Uh, 1991. It was, no? actually, it was actually 1990. Oh. Construction began oh. in 1990. It might have opened in 91. So. Bummer. A little separation here. Uh-oh. David Ramirez up to 800. That knocks John back to 300. But as we saw in our last show, I mean, Patrick Gadosi was dead in the water and he came back okay. in the end. So uh, it really comes down to those 500 in the final Jeopardy. So we'll keep going here. David. Uh, all right. I'll do, um, I'll, I'll do Cruton for 200. Cruton for 200. And this is our daily double, folks. So this will be actually worth 400 if you decide to answer. This Florida prospect became the first recruit in the 2021 class to verbally commit to Carl Durrell and his new staff. Uh, yeah, I know I can see it, but I'm, I'm going to have to pass. Any idea on this one, John? I think so. Uh, is it Alan Bao or Ba or – is that right? How do you pronounce it? It is. Alan yeah. Ba. All right, so we got a game again. Nice, Nelson. John takes uh, advantage of the Daily Double, and it's back to you, John. You get, uh, get to pick the next category. Our Jack 200. The last time CU had a player named a consensus All-American, it was this offensive player who was selected in the 2011 – NFL draft. Um, Nate Solder. 
That's correct. And just like that, John has taken a slight lead over David, but he's got a chance here. What category would you like? Uh, I'll keep trying out the, the 2019 buffs for four. Who returned the fumble caused by Jonathan Van Deest nine yards into the end zone in the 2019 Rocky Mountain Showdown? Ooh. Uh, Mustafa Johnson? That is correct. All right, you're up to 1,200. All right, John? Facilities 300. The finish line for the Boulder Boulder became Folsom Field in what decade? Um, pass. You want to take a crack at this, uh, David? No, I, I have no guess. All right. Just out of curiosity, what would you what would have been your guess? Nineties. David? Uh like oh five. I don't know. <laughs> well it's good you guys passed then. It was the nineteen eighties, nineteen eighty one specifically. Ah. Right, David. Um we'll try the potpourri for two. This defense alignment led the buffs with six sacks in twenty nineteen. Uh Terrence Lang. All right. Thought that might trip one of you guys up, thinking Mustafa Johnson, but but good answer there. Mustafa. All right, John. Uh, Barnett, three hundred. During the coronavirus, the current coronavirus shutdown, Gary Barnett is in what state? Um. I don't know, but uh, I think I should pass. I don't know. Okay. I have a guess, but I, I don't know. David, you want to take a crack uh, yeah, at this? I have, no, I have no idea, no. All right. He is in Arizona playing a lot of golf right now. Uh, that makes sense. I think that would have been my guess, but. All right, David. Um, okay. Uh Let's see. Uh, I'll try Potpourri for 300. How many NCAA tournament games have the Buffs played in under Tad Boyle? Oh. Mm. This is for three. Uh, I'll guess. I'll guess four. Close. Five. Is it the five? answer is five. Yeah. Yep. They beat UNLV and then lost to Baylor, and then they played Illinois, Pittsburgh, and UConn in other first yeah, round matchups. Yeah. All right, John, you're up. Let's go. R Jack 300. R Jack 300. The last two times the Buffs made bowl games in 2016 and 2007. These were the head coaches of the teams they faced. Uh, Nick Saban and Mike Gundy. That is correct. All right. Good one. All right, David, you're up. Uh, all right. We'll, we'll try the 2019 buffs for, for five. What was CU's record against ranked teams during the 2019 season? Now, this is when they played the game, not the final rankings at the end of the season. So, had they played a team that week and they were ranked, if that makes sense? Uh, well, I, I only saw a stat in one place, and I, I don't know how it's calculated. I'm going to say two and two. That is correct, and that's a big one for you, David. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny looking back. They beat Arizona State and Nebraska was somehow ranked coming out here to Boulder. <laughs> and then, yeah, they lose to Oregon and Utah. Uh, so that's the, the four games against ranked teams. Nice. All right, John, you're up. Facilities 400. What was the original name of Folsom Field? Uh... Colorado Stadium. That is correct. All right, and we have a dead heat here, 1,600 apiece. Nice. All right, David. Uh, I'll go with Cruton for 300. 
how many hours are official visits limited to? Oh, geez. Uh, I, Forty-eight. That's correct. Forty-eight. Were you guys hosting guys longer than that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> All right, John, you're up. I'll try Barnett four hundred. Barnett became the color commentary for CU games on KOA in what year? Um, 2017. Oh, it's actually 2016. Yeah. He was there with the rise. I should have known that then. You should have. <laughs> All right, David, you're up. Let's see. Uh, I'll go uh, R. Jack for 400. The last time the Buffs appeared in a conference championship in 2016, this was the only Buff to record a touchdown. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm between two names, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass it. All right, John, you want to take a, a crack at this? Sefo Lufau. No. <laughs> yeah, I want to say it was like. Philip Lindsay. Really? Yeah. 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 I thought it was a rushing touchdown. That would, uh, I mean, a Sefo rushing touchdown. All right. You got some work to do here, here, John. All right. Uh, I will go facilities 500. Ooh. Balch Fieldhouse was opened in what year? Uh, pass. Yeah, uh, I, I have no idea. 1937. I think there is somewhere in there there's reference to that. Otherwise, it's, yeah, it's a pretty obscure question there. Yeah. All right, David. You're up. Uh, I'll go Cruton for 400. How many class of 2020 high school recruits signed? I'm sorry. Yeah, 2020 high school recruits signed with Tad Boyle. Uh, um, trying to think. Um, I'll pass on that one. Pass. Pass? Okay. The answer is four. Dominique Clifford, Luke O'Brien, Jabari Walker, and Tristan Da Silva. That's what I was going to say, too. All right, John. Is it comeback time? It is. Uh, Potpourri 400. How many numbers have been retired by the CU football program? Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I got a pass. I don't think I know for sure. David, you want to take a guess here? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt on that one. All right. It's four. Wizard uh, White, Joe Romig, Bobby Anderson, and Rashawn Salon. All right, David, yeah. back to you. Okay, uh, I'll do um, I'll do Cruton for five hundred. What was CU's two thousand and eight recruiting class ranked nationally according to the twenty four seven Sports composite? It was also the same ranking by rivals. If that's what you were looking at back in, in two thousand and eight, because that was the home of BuffStampede dot com back then. So hopefully that's where yeah. you were looking back then. Um. That was that would have been my class too. I was a freshman in '08. Um, I think it was like nineteen. Uh, Are we guessing? Are we gonna? Is yeah, that? That's, that's my answer. That's your answer. Okay. 
Darn. It's actually, yeah, there you go, John. There you go. Third in the Pac-12 behind USC and UCLA. All right, we got a game again here. Where are we Check. headed? Let's see uh, RJAC 500. The last time the Buffs appeared in the AP Top 25, this was the team they faced. <laughs> um. Hmm. I don't know. Yes. Snelson, just give it a guess, man. Um, uh, this is for 500. Uh, I'll pass. All right. I have a guess, but. What would have been your guess? I would have said USC. You should have guessed. <laughs> yeah, game, began a seven-game losing streak for the Buffs. Obviously, that's the, the turf toe game for LaVisca. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's me. Um, yep. I'll do Gary Gary Barnett for five. Early during his coaching career, Barnett was a successful coach at what Colorado high school? Oh, I think it's um, Air, Air Academy High. That is correct. Air Academy High School in Colorado Springs. All right. And there's one left on the board for you, John. Potpourri. Yeah. Was CU's first brick game victory in 1891, 1904, or 1920? Did you ever take a look at those bricks when you were walking around the facilities? I yeah, did. all the times you filmed them. Uh, 1891. Look at that big wow. answer there. 1891, first win in program history, a 24-4 victory over Colorado Springs Athletic Association. Some of those early brick games are just hilarious to look at based on the <laughs> opponent and score that they have there. All right, we are headed to final jeopardy here. So you guys each have a piece of paper and a pen by you. And John, you have 1,300 that you can risk here. David, you have 1,900 that you can risk here. You can risk as little or as much as you want to uh, based on how much you have. Write that down and let me know when you've got your, your number written down. Come on. Let's see. Mm, I don't know. Does it, does it matter? Are you an all-in, Nelson? <laughs> yep. All as in. well. All right, three, two, one. Put your uh, piece of paper up there. John's all in. You guys are both all in. Okay. All right, so it comes down to this. Here we go. All right, so when I hit this, it's going to go, and it's going to show you the question. I'll read it out, and you'll see a little timer. That's how much time you have to write it down. As soon as the timer's out, I'm going to say, hold up your piece of paper, and we'll find out uh, who's the champion here today. During CU's national championship season in 1990, which buff ranked second behind Eric Bieniemy in rushing yards gained? You have 20 seconds to answer. That is the timer going off there. Gentlemen, time to hold up uh, your answer. All right. It looks like we have a winner here. And it is Darian Hagen with 639. That doesn't include, obviously, lost at sack yards. That's the, the amount he gained on the ground. Yeah. And the winner is David Ramirez. Go. Oh. John, you hung in there. Yeah. What, what, when you think back to your, your day here on CU Sports Jeopardy, what are the moments that are really going to linger with you here going forward? 
Oh, uh, dude, I, I mean, like, I would have known Air Academy so easily. What state <laughs> Barry Barnett in during coronavirus? No idea. <laughs> it, it, he was well, on a, a recent podcast with Mark Johnson, and he was talking about it. So I thought maybe yeah. if, if you guys are listening to that. Uh, David, uh, what's celebration going to be like at the Ramirez household tonight? Well, you know, luckily we have a long weekend, so I think that the celebration will carry into that long weekend and, um, you know, but it'll be, you know, within the, the realm of social distancing. So that's it'll awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, guys, it was fun. Uh, what, uh, what, what category did you feel like maybe surprised you that you thought was going to be easier or harder than, than you anticipated going in? Facilities was harder. Yeah, facilities. Oh, just that was, that was hard. Yeah, with the dates. Um, yeah, some of the Cruton ones were pretty. Got Dal Ward though. I, I kind of thought they started like after they won the championship, so I figured it was gonna be ninety one, but that's when they finished. It was close. Yeah, they they, they opened <laughs> it in ninety one. That's what you guessed. Yeah. yeah. What's crazy is that, you know, from that time it it was you know under construction and open ninety ninety one until the Champion Center came around. I mean, that was pretty much the last facilities up upgrade that they had done, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, well, thanks again for for participating. That was a fun show. Uh, And uh, congratulations, David. Uh, The champagne should be pouring at your household, like you said, long weekend. Uh, Definitely definitely celebrate this victory. Yeah, thanks for having us, Adam. That was fun. Snelson, good seeing you. Good to see you, bro. See you later. Enjoy. See you, Adam. Thanks for having us on. Of course. And thanks to all of you for tuning in.